This video is brought to you by Morning Brew. So around this time last year, I purchased the Microsoft Surface Pro 9 with the hopes I would experience a proper two-in-one. You know, a device that I can comfortably use as a tablet and as a portable laptop. Little did I know that I would love the concept of it, but not the execution. Things get a little bit, you know, irritating when the software keyboard does not show up. The problems I experienced had nothing to do with the device's you know, conception, but rather its internals. From the inability to rotate it properly to a buggy software keyboard that wouldn't show up, it was quite a letdown. The biggest of which was the overall performance. An hour of writing on this device after being unplugged took a 25% toll. Abysmal battery life and overheating that led to physical discomfort. It kind of gets unbearable at some point. Hence the title of my video at the time. Fast forward to two weeks ago, I had to pull the plug again because this time things are very different. I ordered the 11th edition 13 inch OLED Surface Pro with the Snapdragon processor. The one everyone is raving about, having finally incarnated as a real competitor to the M lineup of Apple chips. So I could have gone for the base X plus configuration, but I opted for the X Elite. 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage because of the OLED display, which I'll talk about in a bit. Talking about storage, look at this. The awesome expandability via the magnetic door behind the kickstand is still here. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? So my hopes and expectations bar for the new Surface Pro was not, you know, too high. I didn't want it to shatter any benchmarks. I only wished that it would simply serve its intended purpose. To be a reliable two-in-one that runs a fully-fledged operating system. And boy, am I pleased to share my first impressions. Fortunately, with this new device, my favorite industrial design recipe has not changed. I'm only witnessing tasteful new spices here and there, like the rounded display corners, which, let's be honest, make this two-in-one look very up-to-date. Despite the purposefully created uneven bezels to accommodate the latching keyboard pencil holder on the previous generation, I can only nitpick about the just-as-sharp kickstand, which might be a bother if you wear shorts or skirts. This time, I picked this silver version, which I honestly think looks amazing. But I might have said the same thing about the black one last year. <laughs> of course, the wrong keyboard was sent to me, so I had to settle for this charcoal German layout temporarily, but despite the umlauts, this combo is still over 100 grams lighter than my 13-inch iPad Pro with a magic keyboard and pencil, making it a pleasure to carry around daily. Another improvement that caught my attention is the front-facing 1440p webcam. If you've seen my iPad video recently, you'll understand why I'm so pleased with the quality this thing delivers. It looks absolutely fantastic. So here I have the latest and greatest M4 13-inch iPad Pro, which I recently made a video on, and I have the Surface Pro. Now clearly we have a much better quality on the Surface. In fact, let me start recording on both sides so you can actually see what it looks like and hear the microphones of the Surface Pro. But I gotta say I'm super impressed at how well this thing looks. Uh, we are in indoor conditions, I'd say fairly lit, yet on the iPad things look very much weird and grainy, while here everything is sharp and clear. And furthermore, you can take advantage of features like uh, studio effects, like automatic framing, uh, which is very much like on the iPad. Also you have portrait light, uh, eye contact, which is kind of weird because uh, it makes your you know, eyes look very artificial, but you know, at least you're maintaining contact with the people in front of you. And of course, background effects like standard blur, portrait blur, which is not bad actually. And of course, some creative filters. Uh, overall, I have to say, I am super impressed at how well this thing looks on the uh, in the front facing department. But let's take a look at how things look on the backside. Here on the back, things look equally impressive because this thing shoots in 4K 30 and it actually has even video stabilization. But where people will find most use of this rear camera is when we talk about scanning documents. 
So for that purpose, all you have to do is from the tablet to switch to document mode and simply position the camera to snap the picture. And instantly you get a very clear representation of the document in front of you, which you can you know, send as a PDF to someone or simply use as a reference uh, for later use. Very, very impressive. When I was initially setting up the Surface Pro, I was pleasantly surprised at how seamless the entire process went. Since I'm now using my S24 Ultra daily, I was prompted to connect it to it so that they can communicate with each other. What really surprised me here was the minimal amount of bloatware. Usually, when I set up a new system, I spend quite a bit of time cleaning up excess stuff that I won't be using. But out of the box, there were barely any apps I had to shred at all. In fact, if I had to compare this with my recent Mac setup processes like the M3 MacBook Air, which I'll link below, there was a lot more I had to disintegrate at the very beginning. Of course, this being Windows, after setting it up, I had to wait for about an hour for some updates to run, which was the perfect time to catch up with what's going on in the world via Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter built for busy people and professionals, covering the day's most important business news. It's delivered in the morning, but you can read it in your own time whenever you have a few minutes because it's a super quick read. Morning Brew's writers bring a witty tone to the daily news that makes it more enjoyable to read, making the coverage actually entertaining. How else would I have learned that the Caesar salad has nothing to do with the Julius Caesar? The popular story is that the Italian chef Caesar Cardini created it as a finger food at his Tijuana restaurant in 1924. This is just one example of how great Morning Brew is presented in a way that anyone can understand. Over 4 million professionals already read Morning Brew. It's 100% free and it takes less than 10 seconds to sign up. So there's no reason not to try it. Sign up for Morning Brew today by clicking the very first link in the description below. Okay, so after having read the news, my Windows update game continued, but once everything was set up, it has been smooth sailing for the first two weeks. It is time to run a very non-scientific speaker test. Right here, I have the M3 MacBook Air, the Surface Pro, and the VivoBook S15, the latest one. So let's start with the MacBook Air. Volume is at 50%, by the way. A great example of smooth sailing is Windows Hello and Authenticating. It works probably as fast and as pleasant as Face ID on the iPads and comes in handy anytime I have to log in via my password manager. Unlike before, booting up the OS and waking up the Surface Pro from sleep is a breeze. And it's exactly what I was hoping for. Windows Hello on this computer is amazing and it works flawlessly. All I have to do, even one-handed, is pulling up the latch to just lift it up like this and I'm already in. On the iPad I can't do the same thing because it is almost impossible to open it one-handed and again it's unlocked I have to tap and get in. So very similar performance between those two machines. Super happy that I have this on an actual computer. The game changer here is the X Elite chip. This is what makes this new Surface Pro finally feel super special. It's indeed a real competitor to the M line of chips, and all benchmarks aside, the performance here is amazing. I'm talking about all day battery life and barely any heat, which in terms leads to few reasons for the built-in fan to even kick in. If you've seen my review from last year, which I'll link at the end of this video, you'll be familiar with my struggles to stream a simple video. Can you hear this? 
With this new device, I get use cases where I would take it with me on a Friday evening on a trip only to come back Monday with around 60% battery left. During that time, I would use it to reply to some emails, publish a video and stream some shows in the evenings. Now consider standby time here as well, just snapping it shut and putting it to sleep only to witness an instant power up whenever I decide to continue where I left off. This gives me a lot of freedom to not even think about carrying the charger with me, which I actually left in the box completely unwrapped. When the time comes, I can easily use the two USB-C ports to charge it when necessary. To be honest, I usually end up topping it up by plugging it to an external monitor where things look absolutely as they should. Very different from using an iPad in a desk setup. You know, fun fact, you can connect up to three 4K monitors to this little thing, which is bonkers. Plus, if I use the provided Surface Charger, I end up with two additional USB-C ports, which enable me to connect, you know, external drives or something else I might need. The battery capacity of the Surface on the base model is 52 watt hours. On the X Elite, it's a tad bigger, which is 53 which in terms is very close, if not exactly the same. Well, actually not ex exactly the same, like the 13 inch MacBook Air where we have, I think it was 52.6. Uh, so very much the same capacity on those two competitive devices. The display seems very similar to last year's products, aside from the rounded edges I mentioned earlier. And I'm also talking about the base model of the Surface Pro. The one that I have with me, however, is the next best thing, being available only on the X Elite version, an OLED display. Thankfully, my last year's complaints about rotating this tablet are finally improved. Now, they're by no means perfect or, you know, iPad-esque like in terms of speed, but it is miles better than what it was last year. I mean, last year I had to rotate this thing and probably make a coffee before it actually rotates. This time around, fantastic. Now this is by no means something like the tandem OLED you have on the latest iPad Pros out there, you know, being crazy bright, but still, this is a gorgeous display where you have inky blacks, the vivid colors, decent sustained brightness, actually very good brightness, and of course, the 120 hertz refresh rate. You know, drawing on the Surface Pro with this uh, pen, with the Microsoft Surface Pen, is an absolute pleasure. And <laughs> what I can get, you know, enough of is the fact that I can just turn it around and erase what I just painted just like that and just move on again and and draw and if that's not enough there is a button here which you can actually program to do something right now it's trying to open one node but you can program it to do something else and completely take advantage of the versatility of this now this is no you know iPad pencil the iPad pencil is uh, supreme in my opinion but still having this in a pinch and having the ability to draw on this you know giant beautiful canvas is fantastic and something that you should know probably uh, is the fact that the more you draw on this display you might experience it getting warmer um, I haven't witnessed any discomfort or anything you know to worry about but still keep that in mind for prolonged drawing sessions or writing sessions, you might feel some warmth coming out of it. But overall, this is just very nice. I, I love it. Now this being an ARM powered computer, you can expect native support for some apps like my favorite Affinity Photo, but plenty of others will have to run through emulation. Unlike traditional processors that use the so-called x86 architecture like Intel or AMD, ARM chips are designed for efficiency hence all my rave. Still, the stage that we're currently in has this deal with Windows apps built for those traditional processors I mentioned. ARM-based devices like the Surface Pro with the X Elite cannot directly run x86 apps because they speak a different language. Emulation helps bridge this gap by translating the app's instructions into a format that ARM processors understand. Windows, in that case, uses an emulator called Prism to convert x86 app instructions into ARM-friendly code on the fly, which might manifest in emulated apps that run a bit slower. Honestly, I haven't noticed any issues on my end, even when gaming, but as far as I know, some professional tools such as you know some adobe apps like i think it was premiere might not install at all 
Lightroom, for example, is the only app that I use, runs flawlessly, but I suggest you double check on your end. So I have the Surface Pro connected to an external monitor, which tops at 60 Hertz. Uh, right now I'm testing the waters with Overwatch 2, which I've never played before. You know, hence the training session that I'm currently going through. I've been experiencing a bit of a, you know, hiccups here and there. I'm not sure if it's because, uh, because of the game or the actual uh, performance of the computer, but it seems to be handling things, you know, very, very nicely. Um, I do hear the fan, by the way. Uh, it's cooling up right now. That's actually the first time I can hear the fan, which is very impressive so far. And I need to spend a bit more time here to get better at this because currently... Oh, I need to reload. Okay. I suck at this. <laughs> But yeah, I think it runs, it runs fine. The good news is that support for most of the apps is growing as we speak. So at this point, you might be wondering, what's the catch? Of course, happiness is very subjective because it depends on the individual's mind. And, you know, so far I'm pretty happy with the Surface Pro, although there are a few things that, you know, are not as well implemented as I wanted them to be. You know, for starters, I don't have a double tap to wake this thing up, so I have to, you know, press the physical button and then log in via the uh, Windows Hello, which, hello, it's right there. Second of all, the screen is reflective compared to uh, the anti-reflective coating on the iPad. So if you're using the surface outside, you can expect, you know, a lot of glare and reflections throughout. It's not a deal breaker, but you should keep that in mind. Perhaps a decent matte screen protector would be the solution to this problem. And the other thing is the fact that this is finally a fully fledged operating system that works flawlessly, but it's not touch optimized. It's not like the iPad. So if you were to use this just with your fingers, I'd say you'd struggle in the long term. You have to use either the pen or the keyboard to take full advantage of it. Whilst with the iPad, you can just use it as is and then you know, upgrade the keyboard and the Apple Pencil. Still, I'm so hyped about this device. So while last year my main complaint was that the Surface Pro was pretending to be something that it's not, you know, a two-in-one that can serve admirably as a tablet and a computer, this year, at least so far, I can't say a word. I'm hyped to have this little guy packed into my EDC because it ticks all the boxes. A new processor, the awesome OLED display, the pen, the efficiency we've been asking for, and of course, that beautiful two-in-one form factor. A reliable device that I can use as a laptop and a proper desktop for that matter, or as a tablet for drawing, sketching, taking notes, or simply interacting you know, with my fingers without a keyboard. I'm super pumped because aside from the Surface Pro, I also got a chance to spend some quality time with the VivoBook S15, which runs almost the same specs as the Surface. So if you want to see what the most hyped laptop is like, you know, to live with, subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out. <laughs>